Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, we thank so many people for this um, this webinar, as well as the, the study team, our co-author, Ms. Ritsi Madawin, Lucy Melendez, Angel Castillo, me members of the team, as well as those, those from the Project Management Office under uh, Director Richard Villacorte, A.A. Salazar, and Glenn Miranda. So I'm pleased to present with you the results of our study, assessing the community-based monitoring system as a tool in local development planning. To give you a bit of a context regarding this, this study was conducted as part of the baseline study on fiscal and governance gaps in municipalities. As um, Dr. Reyes mentioned earlier, we presented the results of the study last uh, July 16, and I will re be repeating some of the results um, briefly uh, in a bit. But in sum, the results of the survey of 1,373 municipalities showed that first, in 2017, there was at least a 166.9 billion fiscal gap for the infrastructure services that we focused on, um, municipal roads, primary evacuation centers, and rural health needs. At the same time, the baseline study also focused on the development planning processes of these 1,373 municipalities. Though we recognize that there are more than 1,400 municipalities, we were not able to include in our survey the municipalities that came from the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao, because at the time they were undergoing transition in their governance structure. But uh, in the case for the remaining municipalities we were able to survey, we found that there is a need to update local plans for more than half of these, as well as strengthen the identification, prioritization, monitoring, and evaluation of investment programs. So my, our presentation today um, has a very simple outline. We'll be describing briefly what the CBMS is. We'll show you the scope and methodology, the results and findings, as well as the recommendations. Now, an overview of the CBMS. It was developed in the early 1990s under the Micro Impacts of Microeconomic Adjustment Policies MIMAP project that Dr. Reyes mentioned earlier. It is a diagnostic tool to assess poverty in the barangay, municipal city, and provincial level. And it also aims to provide policymakers and program implementers a good information base for tracking the impacts of macroeconomic reforms and various policy shocks. Now, uh, this is just a, a simple categorization of the indicators and data that can be found in the CBMS. Um, here we have, if you look at the bullets, there would be income and livelihood, housing indicators, health and nutrition, education, access to basic services and facilities, access to programs, political and community participation, migration, climate change, disaster preparedness, security and peace and order, and other uh, community-specific uh, indicators. Now, we have very simple research questions. The first is, is the CBMS used in local development planning? Actually, as I mentioned earlier, this is a rider to the survey that we conducted. So the question that we had really was, what is the primary data set tool that your local municipality used in the most recent development planning process? So this, the survey was conducted in 2019, and we asked the municipalities um, in your most recent uh, development planning process, uh, what, what was the primary data set to use? And contrary to the DILG prescribed RAPIDS and LDIS, uh, majority came out to say that it was the community-based monitoring system that they used in the most recent development planning process that they conducted. And mind you, the ones that we had interviewed for this were the municipal planning team members, particularly the municipal economic and development officer, uh, the municipal engineer, and the budget, uh, the municipal budget officer and or accountant, as well as a representative from the CSO. Um, so, so that's why this is an offshoot of that particular study. So we we went on to probe a bit further. If yes, how is it used, and does it serve any other purpose? So therefore, our objectives are very straightforward. They follow the questions that we have. Uh, the objective is to establish if the CBMS is used, and in fact it is, by majority, and determine if and how CBMS indicators are used in planning, and identify areas of improvement for the planning process with CBMS. 
Now, our methodology, data and scope. So we use the mixed methods approach, uh, the descriptive research, and we analyze the primary data we collected from the LGSF AM baseline study survey of municipalities. Now, if you would please bear with me, um, I had presented this back in July 16, but this is the general relationship between local government plans. And this is more for the benefit of those who are not familiar. I know we have a lot of representatives from the local government, so, so I'm sure you're very much familiar with this. But for the benefit of the others um, here, there are several plans that local governments should are mandated to draft. And the longest term of which would be the long-term framework plan, also known as the comprehensive land use plan. So this one has a validity of nine years. Now from this, ideally, would come the multi-year, multi-sectoral development plan, which would be valid for six years, which is known as the comprehensive development plan or the CDP. And our survey focused on this particular plan, the planning process of the comprehensive development plan. Now, also for the benefit of those who are not familiar, uh, in the Philippines, local chief executives serve for three years. So um, the assumption or the ideally, there would be a turn-based agenda of each newly incumbent uh, local chief executive, and they would come up with their executive legislative agenda that should be called from the comprehensive development plan. Now, from the comprehensive development plan, going back to it, this as I'll be sharing with you later, this shows the vision or the goal of where the local development, lo local government plans to be in, in six years. And they draft based on this and the gap of the reality, uh, programs, projects, and activities that would help close the gap between their vision or their goal and the current situation on the ground. So the programs, projects, and activities should be identified in the implementation instrument called the Local Development Investment Program. And this one is valid for three years. Now, as in our the case of our national budget, um, our budget is drafted annually, the same with local governments. So the challenge is, well, not really a challenge, but there has to be uh, further prioritization of the programs, projects, and activities uh, to be contained in the annual investment program. So, so a local chief executive would typically break down the priority programs, projects, and activities into annual um, bite-sized ones. So, so, so for example, if, if um, a local government uh, official or a local chief executive wants to build uh, three kilometers of roads in the next three years during their term, they could break it down by building one kilometer of road a year and identify that in the annual investment program so that it will get the corresponding funding in the annual budget. Now, if you could please bear with me, I'd like to share briefly the results of our um, survey of the baseline study, local government support fund assistance to municipalities. We asked municipalities that we surveyed if they had the comprehensive land use plan, if they had a CDP, and if they had an LDIP. And interesting, about 91.3% uh, of the municipalities we surveyed came to say that they did, in fact, have a CLUP. But when we examined the CLUP more closely, since it should be valid for nine years, um, with regards to it being current, so we conducted this in 2019, so we asked, we looked at the validity of the CLUP. From 2018, we added and subtracted eight years and considered that to be current. Um, and what we found was that only 64 of the 1,254 municipalities that said they had a CLUP were in fact current. So this is just about 5% of those who claim to have CLUP were in fact current. Now, when we go to the results for the comprehensive development plan, here, um, only about 89.1% of all of the municipalities said that they had a CDP. But when we looked at the figures more closely, and in this case, it should be valid for six years, we looked at plus or minus 2018. If the, valid, if the dates of the CDP fell within that range, it would be considered current. Only about 40.4% of those who said, yes, that we, we do have CDP were in fact 
So finally, for the implementation instrument, the LDIP, which is valid for three years, we did the same exercise. We asked them, do you have an LDIP? And 97.7% said yes. And then when we looked at the, the validity or the currency, um, plus or minus two years, because it should be valid for three years, what we found was that only 31.2% of those who said yes were in fact current. So these were very important findings, which is why I was happy to read uh, yesterday that um, there were calls to, to improve planning, especially in the face of, of COVID, uh, uh, especially at the local government level. And on top of that, um, because of the anticipated possible increase in ERA coming 2022 because of the Vandana's ruling. So, so all the more now is the perfect time to improve and enhance the planning processes of local governments. So let me focus now on the comprehensive development plan um, process. So this is this, these five steps here are what we focused on in our survey. So um, the first step here is to organize and mobilize the planning team. The second step is to revisit existing plans, vision, mission, and sectoral goals. The third step is to prepare the ecological profile to depict the current state of the locality and a list of programs, projects, and activities to address the gap between the said state and the vision. The fourth step is to draft the LDIP as well as the AIP, which, which contains the prioritized PPAs. And finally would be the implementation instruments needed, such as capacity building for the drafting of the CDP as well as monitoring and evaluation of the LDIP. Now we will be focusing on steps two and three. Um, and still I'm trying to give you a context because it is in ecological profiling that the CDMS is used. So in the next slide, uh, let me zoom this a bit. Um, I know it's, this is very vast, very complicated, but our study just focuses on this particular area. Okay, so apparently I can't zoom, but in any case, if you look at this encircled area here, this is where our study focuses on, this encircled area. The second step to the CDP planning, which is setting or revisiting the vision of a local government. And the third step in CDP planning, which is determining the current reality. Because of course, in order for you to be able to address um, any problems or issue, you have to recognize and really have evidence as to what the current status is. Uh, in your locality. So this is where the CBMS comes in. The CBMS, I'll go to the next slide, is figures in here, the determining current reality. So under the CBMS, uh, the DILG guidelines says that you would gather and gather data and information based on the identified vision element or descriptors of the five development sectors, economics, social environment, infrastructure, and institutional development. And from this, um, once the data has been gathered, it would be validated through consultations and comparisons with higher and lower level local government units. And that would be the basis for um, drafting the ecological profile. So what we found here is that a majority of local gov the municipalities we surveyed use the CBMS in identifying the current reality. So, um, as I mentioned, local development planning requires the drafting of an ecological profile to depict current realities facing the LGU. The basis of identifying the necessary programs, projects, and activities that will bridge the gap from current, current reality to the vision. At present, the LDIS, or the RAPIDS, is the prescribed data set to use. However, the survey results revealed that majority of municipalities that we surveyed indicated they use the, the CBMS as the primary tool for data gathering and in the preparation of their ecological profile. So now uh, our colleague, uh, Kata, will present the results of the, the study. Thank you. Thank you, Justine, and good afternoon, everyone. I will now be sharing with you highlights of the results of the study, as well as some findings from a related PIDS study conducted by Dr. Celia Reyes, Mr. Arkin Arboneda, and Ms. Rita Vargas on evidence-based local planning and budgeting using the CBMS. For this study, the major question that was asked to the respondents in the LGUs 
was which data set development tool do they use as the primary source of data for the preparation and or updating their ecological profile in their comprehensive development plans. Results show that although the LDIS or the local development indicator system and the RAPIDS, the rationalized planning indicator system, are the recommended data gathering tools indicated in the DILG's local planning guide for preparing and updating the CDP. The CBMS was the tool used by majority with a share of 57%. The LDIS and the RAPIDS are still used, but only by a small proportions of respondents. And while other LGUs formulate their own data gathering tools, for instance, there were municipalities that used a mix of RAPIDS and CBMS, which they coined as RCBMS. The RCBMS are used by 4.7% of the total number of LGUs. It should also be noted that there are still some LGUs that do not use any tool in gathering data in formulating their ecological profiles for their CDPs. Other data sources mentioned include the data from PSA or Philippine Statistics Authority or any other available sectoral data from national government agencies. Next slide, please. The CBMS have been adopted by LGU since the year 2000. Over the years, the uptake of LGUs utilizing CBMS as the major source of primary data for their locality increased with spikes in 2010 and 2014 onwards. 2010 was then set as the target year for the national implementation of a core local poverty indicators monitoring system, and the CBMS was the primary tool officially recognized by the then National Statistics Coordination Board, or NSCB, to strengthen the statistical system at the local level. This may explain the spike of ad adoption of CBMS in 2010. Next slide, please. Yeah, in terms of the frequency of data collection, majority, or 58.1%, of the LGUs that use CBMS collect data every three years. Others claim to conduct CBMS data collection every year, while some every five years. These responses have shares of 17.8% and 14.8% respectively. Only a small proportion or 3.9% of the LGU reported to have conducted CBMS only once. It should be noted that the evident irregularity in collecting data can be expected since there is no mandated frequency in the conduct of the CBMS or any other data set development tool. Such an activity depends entirely on the LGU officials' perceived need for such. Next slide, please. Most of the LGUs that claim to have conducted CBMS at least once reported to have collected a budget for such. The Internal Revenue Allotment, or ERA, which is the LGU share of revenues from the Philippine National Government, was identified as the main source of budget for the conduct of the CBMS, regardless of the frequency of conduct. Other sources of CBMS budget identified by respondents include locally generated revenues and grant type funding from the national government agencies. We also recorded these top three other sources of funding for the conduct of the CBMS, namely the 5% Local Disaster and Risk Reduction Management Fund, the 20% Local Development Fund, and the Provincial Fund. Now, why are we highlighting this? This is because we want to explore the legitimacy of using these sources of funds for the conduct of CBMS. For the, for the LDRRM fund, purposes of the fund shall be for the support of disaster risk management activities, such as pre-disaster training programs, post-disaster activities, such as repair and rehabilitation of infrastructure, payment of insurance premiums of property, and relief and recovery programs. So there is the question of the basis of utilizing this source of fund for the CBMS. In the case of the Local Development Plan Fund, as stipulated in the JMC of the DILG and DBM on its appropriation and utilization, the 20% Development Fund shall be utilized to develop 
to development projects such as those on social development, economic development, and environmental management. There were expenditure items not allowed to be charged against the 20% development fund. However, funding for data collection for development planning purposes is not explicitly stated there. So most likely CBMS funding can be approved to be charged from the source since or from the LD, from the 20% LDF since it serves as inputs to the LGU's development plan planning. For the provincial fund, we were not able to explore on what was really meant by provincial funds, but maybe these are locally generated funds raised under the authority of the province and is extended to the LGUs of that province. Next slide, please. The municipal government takes the lead in data collection and processing of CBMS data. Enumerators and field editors are usually locally recruited and trained to correctly and accurately conduct the survey in the barangays. Other LGUs, on the other hand, seek assistance from the staff of the LGUs or personnel of barangays within that LGU. Majority of the respondents identified the Municipal Planning and Development Coordinator or the MPDC as the focal person responsible for the conduct of data gathering in the LGUs. Likewise, staff of the MPDO or the Municipal Planning and Development Office usually do the processing and the analysis of the data collected. This result is expected since the MPDO is the main office in the LGU facilitating the updating and development of the CDP. Thus, the MPDO with the assistance of the municipal planning team or the MPT is instrumental in performing data analysis and transforming this data into information. Just a note here that in terms of processing the data for CBMS, computerized processing software such as the CBMS encoding system statistics simulator and the CBMS natural natural resource database on or NDRB are provided for free to partner LGUs. Next slide, please. The LGUs were also asked which data in the CBMS do they mostly use in developing their ecological profiles. Most of the data of, in the CBMS are reported to be highly utilized by the LGUs, in particular, Data on demography, water and sanitation, and education and literacy were recorded as the most utilized. On the other hand, data on access to programs, climate change, household member who died, and political participation were the least used data items. However, it should be noted that the utilization of certain data items vary depending upon the focus of the vision and development planning of the LGUs. Most data, in the C data items in the CBMS are cross-cutting, thus all are useful for analysis, project formulation, and identification. The, the LGUs also identified other purposes or use of the CBMS data aside from when preparing the ecological profile. Most of the LGUs utilize the CBMS also every time there is a need for setting priority areas or sectors, and also when there is a need for basis for budgeting. The positive implication of this result is that the LGUs consider using data and recognize its importance in many aspects of their decision making. Next slide, please. Majority of the respondents claim that data collected through CBMS once processed and analyzed, enable them to identify priority sectors in their LGUs. So most of them identify through the CBMS data, the urban poor sector, persons with disabilities, farmers and landless workers, children and women, and other sectors. Next slide, please. As mentioned earlier, the utilization of certain data items vary depending upon the focus of the vision and development planning of the LGUs. Thus, although CBMS and the other recommended data generating tools are available and has comprehensive and cross-cutting scope of data, some municipalities still identify data items they believe they need as inputs to ecological profiling and planning. More specialized data that are not yet in the CBMS 
are data on environment, data on land, on road network and infrastructure, on geotagging and maps, data on ICT, data on energy and power, and data on tourism. The identification of these data requirements demonstrate the continuous evolution of data needs for development planning of the local governments. On the other hand, there were still some LGUs that identified data needs that are already in the CBMS. Such are demographic and economic data, climate change, and agriculture. This result may imply that LGUs may need different disaggregation of the already existing data, or perhaps there is a need to capacitate even more the LGU staff on the available data that can be extracted from the CBMS. Next slide, please. Yeah. This slide, along with the two succeeding slides, are some findings of a related PID study by Dr. Reyes, Mr. Arkin Arboneda, and Ms. Rita Vargas on evidence-based local planning and budgeting using the CBMS. So in their study, the team did a desk review of the DILG prescribed guidelines on the local planning process to determine and evaluate data availability and to assess the applicability of the CBMS in addressing data gaps in the local development planning. They also looked into data available from the CBMS that corresponds to indicators of the GAD database or the Gender and Development Database and that of the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. Of the 152 indicators needed in the CDP, about 26.3% are available in the CBMS. Among the five sectors in the CDP, majority of the indicators in the social and economic sectors are obtainable from CBMS at 82.6% and 52.6% respectively. Meanwhile, much of the data needs of the CDP are concentrated in the sector of environment and natural resources. However, CBMS can only provide 7% of the data required due to the technical nature of the indicators. Although CBMS also includes environment-related indicators, they lean towards perception of households in relation to current environmental phenomena as opposed to the methodological and scientific process used in the collection of indicators required in the CDP. The LGU GAD database, as stipulated in the JMC or Joint Memo Circular for the guidelines on the localization of the Magna Carta of Women, is established and maintained to serve as basis for gender responsive planning, programming, and policy formulation. The JMC also states that the sex disaggregated data and results of the CBMS may form part of the GAD database. Similar with the CDP, the GAD database also integrates the five development sectors in their list of indicators. The database further requires LGUs to disaggregate their data by sex. So a large portion of data needed in the GAD database is concentrated in the social development sector. In this case, CBMS is able to provide a third of the data requirement. Likewise, the CBMS data can also satisfy one third of the data needs for GAD indicators in the infrastructure sector. Next slide, please. In the Philippines, the SDGs are monitored through various nationally available indicators identified by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Although many indicators available for monitoring have either baseline or historical data, this aggregation of these data are very few. According to the study, only a third of these indicators have breakdown by location or by sex. The CBMS offer a huge potential in addressing these gaps in data availability and granularity in some indicators particularly those that involve data encompassing different dimensions of poverty, which are also measured and monitored by the goals of the SDGs. Majority of the available data in the CBMS is concentrated on goal one, no poverty, and goal four, quality education. Since the SDGs are monitored at the national level and primarily uses macro data, 
the CBMS may not be able to address data gaps related to trade, international relations, national policies, budget, and expenditures. Thus, some indicators stated in Goals 9, Goals 12, and Goal 17 were not adopted at the local level. Also, CBMS do not have environment-related indicators similar to that monitored under Goal 14, Life Below Water, and Goal 15, Life on Land, as they involve meticulous methodologies not captured by household and barangay profile questionnaires. Next slide, please. Now for the summary of the findings, in terms of data set tools for ecological profiling, contrary to the DILG planning guidelines prescribing the use of LDIS and RAPIDS, the CBMS is the most frequently used data set development tool. Further, the CBMS data is used not just for ecological profiling, but also for budget preparations and priority setting. In terms of the regularity of data collection, there was no prescribed regular schedule for ecological profiling, which is why the results show irregularity in data collection for this purpose. To be responsive to the needs of the local government, the collection of data and ecological profiling must be timely and at the same time balances with returns on investment in data collection. Next slide, please. Evidence also shows that fewer municipalities allocate a budget for a regular data collection. And for those that do, a large portion of the allocation is developed to hiring personnel for the conduct of the CBMS. In terms of processing and analyzing CBMS data, there is a small proportion of municipalities that claim to neither process nor analyze the data collected from their municipalities. Though the survey did not probe beyond this response, the anecdotal evidence suggests that not knowing how to proceed with collected data, the LGU sent data to the DLSU AKI CBMS network for processing without any follow-up afterwards. Here are some of the recommendations of the study team in response to these findings. There is a need to review or revisit the prescribed basis for ecological profiling in the local planning process and or reorient the LGU since evidence shows that CBMS is more commonly used than that, that the mandated tools. Also, there were some data items in the LGUs they think they still need in developing and or updating their CDPs but are already available in the CBMS. This response may reflect two things. First, there may be data, but LGUs lack access of information and or they don't know how to access this information. Second, the current form, such as the disaggregation or the levels of the available data may be different from what the LGUs need. That's why they're not able to use them. Uh, on the importance of regular data collection, the recently passed CBMS Act will hopefully address concerns on data collection, processing, and analysis by mandating one, regular LGU data collection to every three years, and two, financial and technical assistance to local governments be provided by the relevant national government agencies, and prioritize four to six class municipalities in the first three years of implementation. The CBMS Act also states that cities and municipalities may keep the CBMS data for planning with guidance from the Philippine Statistics Authority, who is the lead agency in, implementation, in the implementation of the CBMS law. Finally, it must be emphasized that the CBMS is first and foremost a local development planning tool. It was born out of the need to fill data gaps in the past statistical system, wherein the bulk of reliable and relevant information was released irregularly and often too aggregated for further analysis and monitoring. Whether or not policymakers would like to use the CBMS for other programs, such as targeting, its role as a data set development tool for local development planning must remain. Yeah. I'll end my presentation there. Thank you very much. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the PEDS management for giving me the chance to 
for present this study. Thank you. It's a pleasure.